Yo guys, so today we're going to be talking about the coronavirus. No, we're not. Today we're going to be talking about immigration uh, because we're always talking about immigration, right? Uh, so um, we have a new study that's just come out. It's uh, our Danes immigrant uh, immigration policy preferences based on accurate stereotypes. Uh, and it's by the usual suspects. So it's uh, here's the abstracts for use, uh, those of you who want to pause and read over this. And uh, it's published in uh, yet another one of these MDPI journals. Uh, MDPI is actually quite reasonable to publish in because um, there are um, the, the turnaround is very fast. So you either get rejected very early or you get review, reviews in very early and you can kind of move on. And they have the same format uh, across many journals uh, that cover some of the same stuff. So for instance, let's say you write some kind of sociology paper they will have like five different uh, journals you can try. So just try the first one, get rejected. Uh, you can try the second one or, I don't know, you can maybe get through the first one. Um, so uh, that's basically uh, a thumbs up for MDPI. Uh, the bad thing is that it does cost money to publish. Um, so, uh, but it's also open access. So it's the usual and it's cheaper than open access at uh, Elsevier journals and all these. Um, so the, the real, kind of a underlying fact uh, of, of the study is, is this correspondence. So in Denmark, the, um, the Ministry of Finance, they calculated the net fiscal contribution of every person. And the way they do this is that they, um, they take the awesome Danish social registry data. And in that data, you can see how much everybody pays in tax and you can see how much money they earn. So you know how much money they spend approximately. And uh, you see, you can see how much welfare they've received. Uh, that includes also schooling costs, uh, any kind of visits to doctors, uh, uh, this sort of thing, and unemployment benefits, and yada yada. So, um, and uh, crime. If you are using the criminal justice system, the the police have to get paid, right? Um, so you can add up, you can individualize these costs to a large extent, and uh, the ones you can't, like roads, they just get evenly split uh, across the population. So then you just sum in every person, and then you get the the net nest, uh, the net fiscal contribution of that person, right? And um, then you can of course uh, compute an average for some group, and that's what they've done here. Um, so here we see that uh, things are kind of as you'd expect. Over on the left, we have non-Westerns mostly. Over on the right, we have various European groups, and um, as you can see, the blue green color here is the Muslim percent. And so uh, the pattern is, is pretty obvious. Uh, the one problem with this uh, one data set in this case is that the Syria uh, is, is a massive outlier. And the reason for that is that these data are from uh, 2014, financial year 2014, which is in the middle of the great migrant crisis or whatever you want to call it. And so a lot of these people are actually people who just arrived in Denmark and are applying for uh, asylum. And so they're not working at all and they're living on state asylum residents and they're receiving some kind of allowance. So they're just extremely negative uh, fiscally. And um, so if we move on, um, the, ma the main thing here is we have this causal model and it's the same one I talked about in the previous video. And uh, so I'm, we're just gonna walk over it, uh, although we didn't present it uh, in this paper because this paper was written after uh, the other paper. and. Uh, so what we, the fact is really that uh, we have various populations in the world and they vary in all kinds of traits. And this can be uh, IQ, personality, religion, culture, any kind of thing you can imagine, creativity, uh, ethnocentrism and so on, right? Uh, human diversity is real. Um, so when you have these uh, different populations and some of them migrate to your country, um, there will be some immigration selection, but generally speaking, the people uh, who migrated will be uh, fairly representative of the of the origin population. And so you get a, a new bunch of uh, groups, uh, immigrant groups, and they have traits as well. that are caused by the some mix of the, uh, the population traits and the immigration selection. And when you have these groups in your country, they're going to start uh, doing the whole human uh, contribution thing and then uh, eventually you can calculate this this uh, fiscal contribution and um, this is also affected by uh, like how long you've been in a given country uh, and so on so there's some contextual matters and if you only get uh, old people who come from some country uh, they're not going to contribute as much uh, as working age people because they just get pensions 
The same way for children, uh, because children don't pay tax and they cost a lot of money in education and, and so on. Um, you can take that into effect. Uh, un unfortunately, the data uh, just presented, uh, they're not age-adjusted uh, or adjusted for time since immigration. And we can't adjust it because uh, they only give us these summary statistics. And I did email them and ask if they wanted to give them to me, but they didn't. Um, so you would have to pay the Danish government to, to compute these. Or maybe you can uh, get someone in parliament to ask. Um, anyway, so after you have the the actual fiscal contributions of these groups, then people start noticing. And the way they notice, of course, uh, whenever some group is doing poorly, it will eventually be mentioned in the media and someone will read the statistics and go like, hmm, uh, Somalis aren't doing very well. It's pretty funny how they do not very well anywhere, uh, everywhere. Um, and also the media will have some kind of hand in presenting who's, who's, who's good, who's not so good. Um, and... In reality, people don't really sit around and memorize uh, statistics tables of, of which immigrant groups are doing well and which ones are not. And so what if you ask people to estimate uh, the fiscal contribution of different countries, uh, they aren't going to be remembering this detailed table that the government published in some report. No, they're going to be uh, trying to come up with some like proxy, some kind of way to estimate it in their head. So they're going to be using something like the GDP per capita of the home country or uh, maybe if they know someone from that country or what the media told them or, you know, something like this. Um, so there's using some kind of proxy. Finally, then, uh, if you ask people uh, what countries they w they prefer immigrants uh, to come from into your country, uh, so you, you can get like a, a mean preference or a mean opposition uh, for each country uh, of origin that corresponds to these immigrant groups and the eventual countries of origin. Um, and uh, they will then be affected by the stereotypes because generally speaking, very few people are thrilled about having uh, people come to your country or their country and like just be a drain on resources, right? Everybody wants some, uh, they want good immigrants, people who come with uh, the right skills so you can get jobs and contribute so you can live off the, their tax money when you get old. That's kind of the plan, right? Um, but this is also affected by special relationships we have down here, which is stuff like whether your country has like a colonial history or something like that. Uh, as we saw in the previous study uh, in the Netherlands, uh, the current and former colonial possessions of the of Netherlands were fairly welcome in, in Netherlands uh, when you measure these preferences, even though some of them were highly criminal. And so it's uh, apparently people are okay with uh, the colonials coming because they're kind of sort of in the kingdom, right? They're in the kingdom of the Netherlands, just not in the normal Netherlands. Um, anyway, so the, 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 the thing that's basically the, the causal model and the thing about this study is that we have f data for all four of these. Uh, we don't have immigrant traits because uh, it's kind of difficult to measure. Um, there's a bunch of different things and you'd have to estimate the mean IQ and the mean religion and so on. So what we, what we do have, however, is the uh, we have the country of origin traits and these can probably predict these with super high accuracy and that gives us this entire chain. Um, so that's that's kind of the assumption. So we did a survey, and um, a survey is kind of the typical thing. Uh, online sample, it's in Danish, so uh, it's, the questions are in Danish. Uh, we collected this data in 2016. Uh, we had a target of uh, 500 sample size, and uh, that was after quality control. And so we collected about 505 or something like this. And then uh, we applied the last quality control, which uh, was whether uh, people provided uh, the same estimate for every country, uh, because if you can, if you give the same estimate for every country, it's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good indicator that you're just someone who's like filling out uh, very quickly the survey. So you're not really, you don't actually believe every country has the same uh, fiscal contribution. You're just someone who wants more survey money, right? Um, so a few people got filtered out of, uh, of that, like 25 people or so, and so we end up with a 476 um, sample size out of 850. So there's like 30 something percent uh, uh, were actually filtered out because uh, this is like a new pollster and they still had a lot of bad participants in their uh, position pool and they kind of have to get filtered. Um, so the cool thing we can see about the, this, this is the, the correlation matrix of the polychoric correlations. And polychoric just means we're, uh, we have a binary, like whether you failed this or that control and the controls are basically attention checks. So they will do, uh, it will be a question that goes like, 
please select item five or item six or whatever on, on this slide. And so whenever someone uh, fails that, we exclude them. And then of course we check whether these attention checks uh, correlate with each other because we're expecting that someone who who's inattentive in uh, the first half of the survey is also inattentive in the, in, the, in the latter part of the survey, right? So there should be kind of a G factor of laziness or inattentiveness. And, and we do see this indeed. Um, and there's also correlations with the uh, having no variance in the, uh, in the estimates. And so there, there really is a kind of G factor of this. Um, our sample uh, was selected to be uh, representative for age uh, of the non-elderly, uh, non, non very difficult to say, uh, and non-children non, uh, uh, age population and uh, for sex education and um, it happens to be uh, representative for voting as well. And so uh, for sex and education and um, age, we just we looked up the official statistics on, uh, on the Danish statistics website and you can just get the, the data for this year and see whether it fits uh, for, for whether uh, they, it was a representative of politics. We um, we asked people which party they um, voted for, I think, or maybe it was the party they would they would vote for. Um, maybe it's the second one. And uh, then we compared this to uh, two polls that were uh, done by large uh, polling uh, companies uh, close to the time, and they correlate very strongly, like nine five or something. So it seems to be fairly representative uh, of politics and all these things. We had a slight oversampling of educated people. Um, it's very difficult to sample people, for instance, who, who got out of school with no education at all, because these people aren't sitting around filling out detailed surveys, right? They, they hate surveys. That's why they dropped out of school, right? Um, and surveys, writing, any kind of like mental labor. Um, the duration of this survey was about um, eight minutes. That's the median. And as in every survey, you get the, this very skewed uh, distribution such that uh, the mean is, is like twice as high as the as the median. Uh, so it's actually a fairly short survey uh, as surveys go. Um, the survey had three parts, uh, stereotypes of these countries and stereotypes is uh, estimating the physical contribution. And then they had the preferences for the same 32 countries. And then we had some other questions that were used for the, uh, the for the model. And it's this is stuff like age and sex and education and voting and stuff like this. Uh, maybe 10 questions. Um, and so we, we gave these parts in random order to count and balance any any kind of a, like part priming or order effects. Um, so it shouldn't affect stuff. And when we looked for order effects, we didn't really find anything, uh, although we didn't look in extreme detail. So maybe if you analyze the public data, maybe you can find something. Uh, generally speaking, when I do these random order checks and I check what the order is, I, I don't find any effects. So I think maybe, uh, maybe a lot of these order effects that people report in surveys. I think maybe they're just like false positives of people data mining their old surveys to see if they can squeeze out another publication, right? Um, that's That seems likely. Um, uh, just to be specific about how we measured uh, the fiscal contribution stereotypes. Uh, so here's the translated version of the question. Uh, and you can see that there's uh, these, we have like a seven, seven uh, level scale here from the very negative to the very positive. And uh, then we just list the 32 countries in random order as well. So each participant gets a new random order. So this guy starts with Bulgaria. The next guy will start with, uh, you know, Ukraine or something. Um, with the same thing we do for, uh, for immigrant preferences. And uh, this specific question is kind of awkward. But the reason we use this one is that we wanted to maximize our comparability with the, uh, the UK YouGov poll. And so the U UK YouGov poll from 2015 or 16 asked people with in this kind of weird force uh, level way. Um, and so uh, you have kind of two questions that are business as usual or even open borders like uh, more immigrants and the same number of immigrants. And you have two restrictionist views, uh, fewer or like the extreme uh, white purity, no immigrants or something. And so if you add these two groups, add these and add these and subtract them from each other, you can compute a, a mean opposition. It's uh, it's just the this minus these, right? And so you get uh, how, how much disliked some given country is across. Uh, and, and it has the same countries and also in a different random order. Um, so here we have, whoops, I'm going to be small here. So here we have the 
kind of uh, the main findings, so to say. So we look at the accuracy. So on the, uh, the x-axis, we have the actual physical uh, contribution. And on the y-axis, we have the stereotypes. And the reason we have them uh, this way is that uh, the x-axis causes the y-axis, right? Uh, the reality causes the stereotypes. And you can see it's, it's super accurate at uh, uh, 8.1 accuracy, uh, correlation 8.1, or 8.5 if you get rid of Syria. And Syria, as I mentioned, uh, it has problematic because it's uh, it's in the middle of a big migrant wave, migrant wave, and these people aren't actually going to be that negative when they uh, when they like get a little time to settle in the country. But since we sampled in the middle of this crisis and we didn't think of excluding them, um, and uh, so we couldn't really exclude them afterwards because this study was pre-registered. Uh, I didn't mention that, but it says in the abstract. Um, so most of these analyses were pre-registered, so we couldn't really just exclude it afterwards. But overall, you would want to say that the uh, correlation of uh, 8.1 is pretty damn accurate. Now comes the more interesting one. So in this case, we looked at, again, the uh, the stereotypes, are, and the stereotypes are on the x-axis this time, so in the bottom. And then we asked people the net opposition. So this is the one I just explained from uh, these preferences, right? And so from a, a, a rational stereotype model, you'd expect that uh, people have stereotypes, uh, you know, of groups based on some kind of reality relevant uh, data. And then after they have these stereotypes, they then form their immigration policies based on, on these stereotypes, right? They don't just have random uh, policies. They're, they're based in their stereotypes and the stereotypes turn out to be mostly accurate. So the, the policies will also like be relevant to society or like a reasonable uh, a reasonable response and and what we see is that actually it's extremely strongly related of a 9-8 um, and so uh, there's basically no room for anything else to explain the preferences uh, than the stereotypes uh, and now if you're sophisticated you're wondering but what about the common method variants you see we ask people in the same survey to fill out both of them and so of course um, maybe people want to be internally consistent. So they kind of uh, make sure that their answers to one part fit with answers to the other part. And so this will inflate the correlations. And uh, there's a bunch of research on this um, problem. Um, the way we, we uh, looked at this is that because we wanted to examine uh, individual level uh, data, we needed uh, to be able to analyze this at the individual level. So we, we had to ask people both. But uh, there is one way to uh, to examine this method bias or this method variance bias. And the way it is to do that is split the sample in two, then calculate the, uh, the stereotypes for one half and calculate the preferences for the other half, and then correlate these. And if the correlation between these is notably weaker than for the full sample, um, then there seems to be some method variance, right? Uh, we did this and the, there's, no, there's no difference. They correlate 9-9 uh, or whatever. They call it the same. Uh, across the split halves as uh, the, when they don't have any overlap in sample as, as they do within. Um, so seemingly this correlation is so strong, it's not really made by this variance, uh, this method variance factor. But overall, we want to say not bad. So putting it all together, uh, what you want is a uh, path model. And uh, in this table, first we get like the correlation matrix and that's what the path model is based on. We see that this is the same accuracy as we just saw. Uh, this is the Muslim population, and that's the home country, uh, which we take as a reasonable estimate of the Danish population. Uh, and then we have the, the net opposition. And so these are all the correlations that you could kind of see before. And um, if you do a path model like this, and uh, actually we pre registered the path model as well, uh, you get a standardized path a coefficient of more than one from this to that. Uh, which is uh, which is quite quite amazing, and um, this one is slightly positive, and uh, sometimes it gets like p just slightly below 05, and sometimes it doesn't. It depends on which fit measure you use. But anyway, p05 is a stupid standard. Uh, if you actually do a better way of calculating the mediation, what you do is that you can do a causal mediation medi mediation analysis, and uh, the way we do that is that uh, there's a package for that in R. And then you just uh, you just put in these variables, and it will kind of give you an estimate uh, under based on the assumptions uh, that we are making, right? Uh, if you do that, you get the final result is that uh, the estimate is 115% uh, mediation, 
with a lower bound of 100%. So that's, that's got to be the best mediation I've ever seen. Um, in worst case scenarios, 100%. That's, that's what statistics are telling us. Uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. And the way it estimates uh, uh, these uh, upper and lower bound, uh, 95, whatever, uh, confidence as well as just it, it's uh, bootstrapping them. Um, so I don't know exactly how you can sort of get a slight inconsistency between the path model and this, but uh, whatever the case is that the mediation is extremely close to perfect. Um, then we can talk about uh, Muslim bias in estimates. And uh, bias is, is when you have a, an estimator, but there's some kind of, there's some kind of problem with it, right? It's, it just, it's not fair or it's not invariant uh, for some groups. And in this case, one simple way of looking at bias is that you take the, uh, the real fiscal estimates, you estimate that from the, the stereotypes, and then you save, the, you save the residuals, the errors from this model. And then you correlate these with the uh, with some variable you think can induce bias. So in this case, we were interested in uh, Muslim bias because Muslim is always the big topic of the, the media debate and so on. Everybody's saying, you know, these guys are biased for or against Muslims. And so it, it's Muslims are basically the, the, uh, the center point of debate in, in Danish immigration policy. And um, so in this case, we, we do see that there is a there is bias for Muslim groups, but it's it's in the wrong direction. Uh, well, depending on what you use. So people are um, overestimating uh, how much money um, m Muslim groups are, are contributing. Um, so what it means is that Muslim groups on average tend to be overestimated. Um, so in other words, people are kind of too nice to them, not too uh, cruel to them. And uh, this, this finding doesn't go away if you remove Syria down here. It actually becomes stronger if you remove it. And that's true of every, every finding in this paper. Everything gets slightly, slightly better without Syria. And um, you can also get data from 2015 or 2016 uh, financial years. And they also kind of give the very, almost the same result as all these. Um, so this, the Syria outlier is only kind of making things slightly weaker. Um, with this sample size of 32, uh, this uh, correlation is not uh, significant, so to say, with the usual, but it's, uh, it's all the data. So you can say kind of significance uh, doesn't make sense to, to calculate here because th there are no more countries we can sample of these sizes. These are the 32 largest countries of origin. Uh, so in that sense, it's a population. Um, we can also look at different ways of measuring this Muslim bias. And so what we did is that uh, with the previous data set, um, in the previous study, this one, uh, we have more countries, 70 countries, and so uh, you can get uh, a more precise estimate of the correlation. And in that, con in that data set, you see these values are, are pretty similar and slightly stronger, and they don't overlap with zero in this case. Um, one problem with the current study is that we used this method, uh, the Muslim residual R, and it's, it's, it's not a it's not a really good measure of bias. Uh, it's better to use the Muslim error uh, correlation. Uh, unfortunately, we, we can't calculate that here because we did not ask, the, uh, ask people to estimate uh, fiscal impact in, in, in natural units. And you need uh, nat matching natural units to calculate, uh, to calculate this Muslim error. Uh, so you, you need ratio data if you need um, if you ask if the real um, the criterion data is about fiscal impact in euros per person per year, you must ask people to do this. Otherwise, you cannot use this metric. So it's it's better but stricter. But we see that when we try all the methods uh, in different subsets across the data sets, um, we every every value is negative, and a lot many of these are are less than PO5. Uh, so if you are someone who cares a lot about PO5, this uh, this will give you some. Uh, some support, I guess. Um, the different way of looking at it is that instead of looking at the average stereotype, we can look at the individual stereotype. And so if we can compute all the individual stereotypes, uh, the correlation with the truth, uh, we get this, this, this plot. And uh, so this shows the distribution. And we see that the median is uh, like 0.6 uh, something accuracy. Uh, which is surprisingly good, and but we also see this interesting uh, far left tail, 
And so there are some people who manage to have a negative accuracy of almost 0.5. So it's, it's almost like they read the, they read the question and they answered it completely the other way around. And so there's kind of two ways we think, we don't really know, right? Um, so maybe some people just misread the question and they think uh, they're supposed to do the opposite of what they're actually doing. So maybe uh, net economic impact, maybe they think positive is, uh, is worse than uh, instead, of, instead of better, right? That, that's possible. Um, it's another option is that people are simply sabotaging the data. And uh, there's actually some support for this because you can read the comments that people left of the people who've done some of these uh, reverse, uh, reverse accuracies. And um, sometimes these people leave uh, funny comments about how they think this kind of study is unethical and blah, blah, blah. And if you check which, uh, which parties these people vote for, it's, it's almost invariably one of these like uh, super immigrant loving. Uh, so it seems that they're sitting on a survey uh, poll. They're getting paid to take these random surveys. They get this survey of immigrant opinions and then they're like, uh, they're sitting home and raging and then they're like filling out the survey uh, incorrectly on purpose to kind of screw with the numbers. Uh, we actually did ask some people in in a, did a pre prior study of these and there were some actually who admitted to saying that, yeah, I, 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 I did it the incorrect way uh, on purpose to, to help immigrants or something. Uh, whatever the case, that that's uh, maybe the explanation of it. So it's kind of like the... Um, the lizard man's constant. There's always going to be some trolls or assholes in your survey data, right? Um, so uh, a different way of looking at the Muslim bias is at, in, at the individual level. So just like we calculated this for the aggregate stereotypes, we can do this for every person. And um, let's see this. Uh, okay, it's just pardon me. Uh, and so what we see here is a, it's a it's a correlation plot, and you can see it's very uh, nonlinear. And uh, so values below one are people who are uh, biased in favor of Muslims in that they tend to overestimate uh, how well the Muslim groups are doing. And so there's only one guy up here who managed to be uh, biased uh, against Muslims in, in that he underestimated their, uh, their fiscal contribution. Everybody else is down here. So you get the, the funny effect. If you correlate uh, accuracy with bias, you get a, a very strong positive correlation, which to some people may suggest that the calculation is wrong, but you can see the actual fact is that uh, most of the almost all the values are below zero. And so larger biases brings you closer to zero and therefore larger biases is better in, in this case. Um, because what you really want is kind of the absolute bias and that's the one that will be correlated with accuracy, of course. Um, abs large absolute biases is worse. Uh, so it, it, it matters a lot to pay attention to the scaling of these and there's a lot of uh, errors in social psychology when they report correlations like this, but they don't pay attention to the scaling. And so they say white people are higher and say uh, racial animus. And when you look at the data, it actually shows the exact opposite. It shows that uh, white people are actually race neutral and uh, black people are, are sorry, uh, black people, for instance, uh, are, are pro-black. And so on the bias scale, whites are higher because they're actually closer to e egalitarian, right? Than, than the the blacks or maybe the Hispanics or something, and I, as I recall, you you find the same thing for men and women, but maybe look into it because I'm not sure. Uh, next thing we can do is that we can fit some regression models, and we can uh, we can look at who is actually accurate. Um, and so we asked a bunch of typical things: age, sex, education, who they're voting for. Um, we also had some policy preferences, but didn't use them in the model uh, because we considered these downstream from the uh, from the uh, from the accuracy. Um, and so, what we see is that uh, the sample size is not entirely optimal for this because these these effects are kind of small. And uh, one problem is that we in the survey design we forgot to ask about education. And so, um, when we got in in a review, um, and the reviewer complained about this, uh, and then uh, what we did is that we wrote the the pollster and we were like, uh, do you have some like archival data on these people's education? And they were actually able to give us uh, education for 60% of the sample. So we got 60% uh, of the sample with the education data and uh, the rest uh, just don't. So we fit uh, every model twice, one with and one without education. And um, so if we look across these and we kind of look at the stars and the stars is going to be the usual 5% uh, stuff. So basically we're interested in stuff that's 
preferably two stars or more because that's one percent like just a single one star a random place that's probably a false positive or uh you know it could be it's a large danger being it but if you do look across we generally see but not always that uh, age predicts accuracy older people are more accurate uh, female predicts accuracy negatively uh, sometimes you can see there's one star here one star here two stars over here so it's it's consistently negative but not always convincingly so education always predicts it positively and so uh, and uh, furthermore um, maybe left-wing voting bloc predicts it um, negatively and so these individual parties they don't show anything significant because this sample size is not large enough to to see any differences the differences between parties are going to be fairly small apparently and so uh, you would have you would need more people to to spot these uh, as you can see the standard errors are are quite large here if a standard error is is 0.2 you need to go to two standard errors in each direction to get the the 95 uh, confidence interval so the 95 confidence interval for this one will be like minus 5 to uh to plus 30 or something so that's massive you could not estimate these unless you had i don't know 2000 samples uh, that's kind of i guess the problem with the multi-party democracy but you can always recode it into the voting blocks and then you can almost see the pattern which is interesting enough. Um, overall, however, the models are not very good at predicting accuracy. You guys, you can see even kind of the best model, judging by this adjusted R2, is it predicts 6.6% of the variance. Um, and so why is this? We, we must be missing some important variables or, or maybe stereotype accuracy is actually not reliably measured by just having asked once about stereotypes. Maybe. Maybe you need people to maybe you need to ask them about three different uh, immigrant stereotypes uh, for the same countries across like three weeks. So like do it one of them one week, second one the second week, and then you average the accuracies from these. Maybe, maybe this is how you do it. Um, as far as I know, there's no there's no study that has looked at individual level reliability of stereotypes, uh, which is unfortunate. So we we don't know how much. Uh, error, measurement error, there is in the dependent variable. And so that's going to be something to look into. Uh, to look at the the, pref uh, the policy preferences, um, here we have some of the same variables as before. Um, I see we forgot education in this table, but uh, otherwise, what we see is that um, stereotype accuracy has slight preferences with, um, with being more restrictionist. And uh, so people who have more accurate stereotypes are very slightly less if open to uh, to immigrants, and these these questions are, are translated here, so you can read them uh, as you want. Um, so this is kind of the opposite as what the the media narrative is that uh, the media narrative is that uh, people who are against immigration are just like uh, racist bigots that are basing their policies or policy preferences on nothing real and they need to just you know move to the ghetto and get to know muhammad right um and his five cousins and uh, on the other hand uh, if in uh, the data actually shows the exact opposite but a weak pattern and these correlations are not that significant uh we didn't ask the we didn't add the asterisks here but i mean you can see the sample size with the sample size 400 something these correlations are going to be like borderline uh, so you the, this is the same pattern as results we found in a different data set. So if you were to do a meta-analysis with a thousand sample size, you, these would uh, definitely be real, but they're just weak. Uh, so the narrative is, is definitely reverse reality, but reality is there's only a, a weak relation uh, in this case. Um, if you want to zoom out at a bigger perspective, we can uh, compare it with the UK data. And so in the UK data is from uh, it's some, from some surveys, Noah Carl, he found, I think these are both from 2016 or maybe 15. And in the, in the UK, they, uh, he found the crime rates by different, uh, these populations. And I think it's the violent crime and the arrest rate or something like this. Um, and if you then, uh, you can compare the two different outcomes and the two different stereotypes we have in Denmark, as well as the UK crime rate and the UK net opposition. And so what we see is that when we look at the actual outcomes, like 
the immigrant performance, we see that they're all related, as you would expect, uh, uh, groups that are more on benefits, um, have worse fiscal contributions, and have higher crime rates. Um, and the same for these other ones. Um, the This is the accuracy in the, uh, in the old study. The stereotype accuracy was 0.70, which is weaker than the current one, maybe because we had more countries, or uh, maybe it's because in the prior study we used ratio data, so we asked people to estimate the the benefits used in percentages, and maybe that was more difficult to people. Uh, so that introduces some like scale variation. So you will get a smaller accuracy. Uh, whatever the case is, that uh, we can see one interesting thing that we're going to go over in the next uh, is that uh, if you look at net opposition in Denmark and in the UK, they correlate um, nine seven. So uh, there's only twelve groups in this and this these. There's only 12 groups that overlap between these surveys because one of them was like a YouGov UK one and the other one is uh, ours, right? And so, so you see that it's nearly perfect which uh, immigrants that Danes and, and British people prefer, uh, which is uh, definitely interesting. Uh, as uh, someone was pointing out to me, it's pretty interesting and weird how everybody seems to not be very thrilled about uh, polls considering that uh, there are actually tons of polls in, in Denmark and in uh, and in the UK that are mostly their working age and actually contributing a lot of tax and still somehow the natives don't like them. So I don't know, it's it's a good guy Polish comes and does like men menial labor you don't want to do and some you still dislike him. And people actually like these Asians more, even Indians, uh, which is uh, odd. Uh, so maybe people have some stereotypes that are not accurate uh, for these particular comparisons. Uh, Muslims and Romania are not preferred by anyone and uh, West uh, West Europeans are everybody's favorite. Um, so it would be definitely be interesting to do this kind of comparison but with more countries and uh, like more country immigrant groups and more same old groups. So like a pan-European survey of which immigrant groups you prefer that would be very interesting. Um, so maybe I'm actually just gonna post this, a little survey on Twitter uh, asking people and maybe we can get enough data. Um, <clears throat> so to summarize, um, stereotypes were super accurate again. Uh, we actually predicted, uh, based on prior study, a correlation of 8.4, and we found 8.1 and 8.5 without the outlier. So that was uh, ridiculously accurate. Um, stereotypes perfectly mediated the relationship between net, fis uh, net fiscal impact and the policy preferences. Uh, so the yeah, there's there's no there's no other relationship between the actual group's um, uh, contribution to society and the policy preference, except for the people's stereotypes. Uh, so there's, there's, there's no there's no way here for any like hidden racism to explain preferences. Like people aren't just, uh, people are not uh, in this case against Muslim immigration because of some, some taste preference as economists would say. Their, their preferences are perfectly linked with their, um, with their stereotypes. So people think they're bad uh, taxpayers and they are and so that's that's how they got these preferences um, so the, we got all the predictions from this causal model they were all uh, born out uh, and so the, we kind of have the, the pathway from the the, uh, the model is, is uh, that human biodiversity in, in, in the natural origin populations they ha they lead to these uh, group gaps in social performance when you have a bunch of immigrant groups and then you get stereotypes of these uh, social performance gaps, and then people uh, base their pre pre policy preferences for these countries on the same stereotypes. So it's all very boring and, and common sense, uh, common sense. But somehow other people don't want to to advance this model. So I'm happy to. Uh, main issues of this data set, uh, I think, should be mentioned is that uh, we had a bunch of uh, bad participants, and so we filtered these out. Our filtering criteria were pre-registered, so it's not the case that we just sat around and p-hacked them uh, until these results become perfect. No, they were they were decided upon uh, ahead of data collection, so there's no cheating. Uh, we didn't measure IQ, which is uh, sad because uh, IQ is the strongest known correlate of uh, stereotype accuracy, and this isn't really well known in the literature. So we are actually have another pre-registered large data currently gathering that is. Um, collected a very nice IQ estimate 
and I can I can I can reveal here that uh, it it works very well. Uh, correlation point three something, and uh, education is non significant in a regression model when IQ is there. So, education is a proxy as usual. Um, in the going back to the limitations, we have only education data for sixty percent of the sample. Uh, which uh, was due to an error on our part. We, we simply forgot to ask about education um, when we collected the survey. Um, so I guess uh, we are idiots. Um, slight oversampling of more educated people. Specifically, we had, uh, I think in the, we're supposed to have about, I think 20% of people are without any education except primary school. And we only had, I think 11 or 10% in our sample. And so we had like slightly more college students and slightly more uh, people with vocational degrees and so on. And I guess these people um, don't take surveys or maybe they made so many mistakes that we filtered them out. Um, whatever the case, uh, it was pretty representative uh, for most things. And um, that was actually quite good. So of course I want to say that uh, Unfortunately, we're in the middle of the corona uh, epidemic, so you may not have spare cash, but uh, if you want some research like this, you know you know the drill, uh, it costs money. I can say that for this particular study, I think it cost about $3,000 to do, and that's excluding time spent. Uh, so, so no salary for, for me or any of the other people uh, involved. And it's quite naughty. It took us, uh, I don't know, 10 attempts to, to publish this. We probably will be publishing the the peer reviews because some of these were hilariously stupid and um, but I, it's it shows the value of uh, preservation like or uh, you just got to keep trying anyway if you want more of this research uh, you gotta go and donate more money to us otherwise uh, you won't get it and uh, of course as usual you get the uh, all the references for this stuff and uh, that's basically it adios